and I appreciate you all being here. We will have the, um, well, let me read the first part here. Bolger City Council regular meeting today. Normally it's on Tuesdays, but we had the 4th of July holiday, so it's today, uh, July 6, 2017 at 3 p.m. Have the call to order. Invocation by Mr. Scott Irwin and the Pledge of Allegiance by Mr. Timothy Lorkin. Please stand. Please bow your head. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for all the blessings that you have bestowed on our community. Lord, we, as we celebrate our nation's birth this week, we just want to pause, Lord, and, and uh, acknowledge the blessings. Lord, we pray for everyone to have safety as this storm gathers outside. Lord, we pray for wisdom uh, during this council meeting today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mr. Montgomery? Absent. Mr. Larkin? Here. Mr. Irwin? Here. Mr. Darby? Here. Mr. Williams? Here. Mr. Free? Here. Mr. Harvey? Absent. Approved minutes of June 20th, 2017. Meeting and dispensary reading? So moved. Second. Council, please cast your vote. Do we have any addition? No, sir. We have no additions to the agenda. Okay. And we we'll like I'm to make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. Council, please cast your vote. Before we get to the uh, special guests, um, I think uh, I'll take the opportunity to congratulate the mayor and also the members of the city council for another four-year term uh, to serve the people of Boulder City. And also uh, like to thank Mayor Walker for uh, his uh, taking care of the expense of the invitations and also the reception on, on uh, last week. Uh, I'd like to thank the voters who gave me the money to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, we'll appreciate that. And um, regarding the, the guests who will speak and any person who would like to speak before the council, um, once you come up, uh, you will give your name and your address and um, you will be able to to speak or to comment on the agenda, agenda item that the clerk will read. And everybody feel free to do that. I will open the floor for that purpose each time. And uh, we welcome all comments on each item. So the first person we have as a guest uh, today, uh, Ms. Um, Cahill. My name is uh, Sonny Cagle. I live at 1218 Elsa Jane in Bossier City. Um, I'm part of District 4 because I've uh, talked to Mr. Free. I'm here to address an issue that I have with the uh, Bossier City Utility Department over a water bill. And after I realized that I was being overcharged and there was a problem, I started hearing from other residents, not just in District 4, that are having the same problem. And I am a renter um, where I live at. And I've now had even a master plumber out that is doing the redoing the plumbing for Bossier City High School. And he has come out and there are no leaks and there are still uh, issues. My problem is that uh, the Bossier City Utility Department really is not helpful. Uh, Mr. Free's been helpful, but uh, even getting the bill cut in half when you have people that are sitting on, you know, Social Security limited income and then they're getting bills like this. They go to the utility department and they simply cut the water off. I, I, somebody's gotta do something about it. I've talked several times to, uh, I can't remember her last name, Miss Phyllis, and she even offered something uh, for me to try and do with food coloring just to see if I did have a leak running water somewhere and I did so. Still 
food, the colored water is still sitting in my toilet. So there's not a leak. But they've already changed my meter out. And I think the reading now shows about 35,000 gallons for the month. I understand it's automated. This master plumber has come out, gone through everything, you know, and I'm still having a problem. I have bills when the house was empty from the actual homeowner because it's company, and they were $485 with no one in the house. My issue that I'm trying to present is who is checking behind the water department and who is helping the residents because basically my bill was due June 20th and would have been cut off within a few days for not paying it, and there's no recourse. If it was center point, they would be coming out trying to figure something out and work with you if that was really my bill. If it was SWEPCO, they would be coming out trying to work with me, trying to figure out what was going on. And I, it's not just District 4 that's being affected. There are, I've talked to 13 residents, only one was a portion of uh, District 4. And it's all the same thing. And I understand they've changed my meter out, but there is still a problem even with that. And even with the help that Mr. Free's given me, Cutting my bill in half when it's a $900 bill, that's not gonna help me. I mean, yeah, okay, I'm gonna have to pay that. What does that do for people on a set income that have no option? If you take a bill like that and you cut it in half, it's not gonna give them the option to pay that. It's still gonna be cut off. You know, how come it's not at least being average to what I should use and somebody come out without me having to raise a fuss and call the city council to get anything done? So that's what I'm here to address. I'm not the only one it's happening to. It's happened a lot. And uh, now we, I've got plumber bills in addition to the water bill. And there still is a problem, even though the meter was changed out. I'm not a plumber. I don't know anything about that. But a master plumber's come out, explains about other components, and it's, it's just been nothing but uh, one thing after another. And it seems pretty simple. So, and Mr. Free's been great. Uh, Ms. Phyllis has been great. But who checks up behind this and who is helping, you know, residents in the city of Bossier? I mean, how many people has this happened to? Well, we do appreciate your bringing it to the city attention and also the administration. And I think um, they would be receptive to your having a dialogue more so if you choose to do that. Uh, we have the mayor right here and we have his CAO Right there. Mr. Yes, President, sir. It might be helpful if either Judy and or Pam uh, provide some additional information. Judy, would you? Here and now? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Judy Vetkoder, City of Bossier Water Department. Um, I think for this particular account, um, when she notified the office of her first bill that was like $369, I believe I gave it to y'all. Um, my clerk noticed there was consistent use hour on the hour and what we try to do is tell the customer that there is a problem and so they can get it looked at and addressed and then we also go out and do a gallon test so we, we did the two things we told her there was a problem I believe she had the plumber change up the the guts of the toilet as they call it at that point in time I think there was a little bit of help and relief because we didn't have the 200 every single hour on the hour we still had 11 you know gallons 12 gallons and so forth so when they come back and say, hey, I've got my fit, I got it fixed, here's the plumbing bill, split the water and sewer, we really like to look back at the account and make sure that it's completely fixed so that the customer doesn't get yet another big bill the next month and say, oh, wait a minute, you gave me the adjustment. So when that happened, um, it was still showing a small usage, but every hour on the hour, we notified her. I don't know uh, exactly what happened at that point. I know she went back. Um, and the next I, I, I had never talked with her. And the next I knew that the news um, had said that she had a $900 water bill and then the other people on that street. So what we did is did the two gallon test. They both came back correct into, you know, to the penny or the drop of the gallon. Um, what that does is just ensure that it's reading correctly, you know, and that's all we do with a brand new meter because we get the hourly reads. Um, other than that, you know, that's all we can do for the homeowners and split the water and sewer usage of the water bill once it's been fixed. We do it daily, every day for people. They get it fixed, we come back and we do that. That's, that's all that we have done. So on our end, you know, we still feel like there's something that is missing there. That's, I don't know what it is, I can't tell you. Our people can only suggest toilets, you know, faucets, 
things like that. Do you think your, your technician would suggest that the uh, property owner we have normally, someone to? Yes, sir. We normally tell the customer if they're renting that, um, you know, you need to talk to your the person who owns the house, get mm -hmm. them to come out and help you fix it, help you do whatever. We've had customers say, well, they took it off our bill because we did have to pay this, you know, plumbing bill. We don't always try to suggest immediately that they, we never use the words, you have to get a plumber. We like to let them know there's a problem and they usually en end up talking to the person that owns the house and, mm -hmm. and get it fixed. I believe there was um, the prior uh, tenant or if it was just an empty house, I'm not sure. I know there was several bills in a row, so I assume there was something why it was left on, but it, there was a $400 bill at one point in time a couple months um, back before she moved in on that particular account. So to me, there's a kind of an ongoing, whether they're putting a Band-Aid over it or not or fixing it all the way, I don't know. But, you know, when we also, I'd like to note, when we were notified of the large bill, we did put her in the do not cut off folder so that she had a problem so that we did not cut her off. And we did not. So we try to work with the customer when they have a plumbing problem or an issue that they're trying to address. We don't just go and cut them right off. So okay. we do as much as we can. Okay. Jeff, I'd like to ask you just one line on this one. Just for, for your understanding, I, I've talked to Judy on many, many, many occasions. Yes, sir. A lot of them. <laughs> and you're always willing to help do something, you know, whether it's, whether it's a cut off or not cut off or whatever, she's been there to help. My suggestion is like she did, so have you contacted your landlord? Uh, yeah, to, to finish that, uh, I had a plumber out even on July 4th, and it's a master plumber that has even called and said, this is my ID number. There is a problem like the $400 bill, the house was actually empty. It is a like a company that owns rental houses, and they paid it because they're not here, they're not in like Bowser City, they're in Waco, Texas. My issue is like even cutting a bill in half. And like she said, this happens multiple times. So we just basically suck it up. And you know that I, even, even if you cut the bill in half, just the one bill for 68,000. So basically I'm paying for using 34,000 gallons. Is that the standard for a single person? No, my, my, where I was getting to, you know. But we've had, we, I've had four plumbers, uh, I've had a plumber out four times. Where I was getting to, and I've done some plumbing, okay. Yeah, I don't know enough about it, but... If it's nothing looking in your toilet, your bathtub, your sinks, or whatever, in the wall, you see it in your sheetrock, yeah. you got something under your slab. That's you what he checked for. Your slab. They, do have, they do have equipment. They can come in and go over your slab, and they can they can hear a leak. Now, they can drill it up, you know, but that's that's when you need to get one of your landlords. And I mean, the landlord's All their people can that. do is change the meter, check the meter, do the two-gallon test. They're not... If you want them to come in your house and change things, that's not their job. I'm not wanting them to do that. Oh, I'm just telling you, you need to con contact your landlord. And, and I have. And, okay. and the landlord sent and a, and a somebody that out has like one of those four times now. That can come in and do this lab test. That's the only way you're going to find out. It's, it, plumbing is not that difficult. It's, it's not rocket science. Either you see it come out or you don't. You know, well, so I understand, but that's slab. already been done, and he couldn't find a slab leak. And he well, explained what it, all I would be seeing, too, on the slab leak, but he cannot find a leak anywhere. And he's done that. And he even came back on July 4th on the holiday just to check because he knew the meter had been changed out. And he did explain other stuff, but they came in there with actual equipment, went through everything, and he's been there four times now. And it's still, there's still something going on. I understand that that meter's reading something, but there's still something going on, and he can't find any leaks. Now, when it comes down to it, what I was asking about was, okay, they cut the bill in half so that's all the resident gets is that there's nothing that tells the city hey this is too much water something's wrong I mean it's that's not even an average for like an individual to use that much there's nothing that I guess pops up with them that says hey something might be wrong here well once it's reported they, they can like she does said they can ping it every hour and see where if, if it's leaking every hour they can't tell you where it's coming from all they can tell you is your meter's running Every hour, they're showing, they're showing usage. That's what I'm saying. Whether they did or not, I'm not going to say. You need to get someone out there with a slab, a water detector under the slab, and, and let them find it. Because if you don't see it in the house, it's going somewhere, and it's probably going down under the slab. And they've done that, and he couldn't find a slab leak. So now what's the next step? Ben, did you, do you have any input you would like to offer?
guys. Good afternoon. I'm, I'm Ben Reichenbach. I work for Manshack Consulting and help manage the utility department for Bossier City. And what I'm, I'm hearing is pretty simple to determine whether or not your house is leaking and there's an issue with the meter. If you shut everything off in your house and your meter's still running, you got a leak, period. And that's not something, you know, that's on the customer side in the city of Bossier, you know, the customers generally are required to take care of those issues uh, themselves. So can you tell me, what did your plumber tell you? Oh, the fourth time he came out, the, the same thing. He still couldn't find anything, and he had already done the machine stuff and but he, explained all that, but he just he came out to take a look again at the meter because he can't find any leaks. He, he's not showing anything. But did he confirm that when everything was shut off, the meter was still running? He basically told me if he shuts it off from the house, uh, it's not. And that's, it. I don't understand enough about plumbing, but it's, I mean. It, yeah, if he, he shuts your mask, if he shuts it off at the meter, it, it stops. But if, if you have your faucets and everything's turned off in your house and you open the meter and it's still running, the odometer, like in a car, is still running, that would suggest you've got a leak somewhere. Like, I understand that, and they, the, the owner didn't send in a plumber out, but he can't find anything, so I'm still stuck with, and I understand the meter's been changed out, I understand all of that, but when it comes down to it, I mean, this isn't just me that this has happened to, and it, there's no solution, so basically I'm just going to need to move out of the house because a plumber's saying there's no leak in the slabs, he's brought stuff in there, and this is the best we're going to do because I think the new reading now is showing 35,000 gallons. If you go look at just the average for a single person in a month, they wouldn't use 35,000 gallons. That's Mr. Like Dorby, could I ask Judy to answer another yes, question? Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Judy, have you heard any other complaints from other customers on Elsa Jane? No, sir, I have not. And I did a query of two years when I saw the story report that we had a $1,300 water bill and there is no accounts for two years, month by month, of anybody on Elsa Jane. And I'd like to add, anybody that does have a problem, we've not had a complaint one out of someone who's gotten a plumber or either told their landlord. Usually the landlord that's a good landlord doesn't charge the, you know, the tenant either the, you know, the bill to get it fixed or the water or splits it with them or does something. So, again, that's what's only bad part is when they rent. Thank you. Okay. Can I ask one more question? Sure. Who, 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 what, what plumbing company are you using? Uh, his first name's Derek. I think it's called Available Plumbing. Well, they sent out a different one the first time. Then they sent this guy out because he's a master plumber and they wanted to have some slab checks. But he was aggravated because he couldn't find anything after the machines, and so he came out July 4th. He called me that morning to see if he could come out and have a look at the meeting. Could you come back to the mic right there? That's, that's, that's all I wanted to know. Okay. And the only thing I can tell you is they contacted this guy, and he's uh, – working on Bossier City High School's plumbing right now. So if he can't find anything, you know, the only solution basically is I just pay half the bill, so I'm stuck with that. Just call me. And I, what I can at least do is send one of our guys out to see if we can see if we see anything when we go out. Um, it, it does look, though, at the end of the day, um, what's happening is somewhere on your premises water is being consumed and um, it needs to be stopped and if that is that would be the responsibility of either uh, essentially the owner or you as a tenant but it can't be the responsibility of the city because that, that's not uh, wouldn't be a good idea for the city going around fixing everybody's plumbing so um, and I understand that. It's just we still got a problem, and a plumber's been out. Well, then, then it, if you understand that, then then do you understand that you would have to get it fixed? I mean, that's the, the owner's way. gonna. It was trying to get it fixed. Okay. My issue is that I'm not the only one it's happened to, and it wasn't a bunch of Elsa Jane residents that it's happened to. But it basically you, you well, cut my bill in half. But I still don't have the problem solved, even though a plumber's been out repeatedly. Okay. Well, I, I can. Doesn't look like we're heading anywhere here, but anyway, I was just. I changed plumbers and let a new, new one come out. Sure. That's the third plumber they've sent out. Well, that's the it third it person they sent out from their company. No, it's uh, different companies. Okay. 
because they wanted to check a slab leak. And uh, that's why the last one that's, that was master plumber came out was to try and find a slab leak and he, he couldn't. Okay. Um, thank you so much. And I appreciate the administration for cutting your bill in half. That's, that's a courtesy of the city. And I know it's not what you expected, but it was something I think. Uh, Mr. Free, did you have something you want to add to your constituent? No. Can you follow up, Ben, and see if you can see anything? I think ultimately, though, we're, like they've had suggested, we're going to have to find somebody at the landlord's expense to go out and do a slab test and figure out where that water leakage is coming from. Because it's not so I'll just have them submit the paperwork because they already did a slab test. He did a slab test on the, uh, it was Saturday, actually, because the meter was changed out on Friday. Yeah, can you forward me those? Yeah, I can do that. Please, and I'll follow up as well after Ben goes and takes a peek. Thank you so much for your Appreciate time. Appreciate you. Thank you, Ben, and Judy, Mayor. Unfinished business. Adopt an ordinance authorizing the institution of expropriation proceedings pursuant to a local services agreement executed between the parish of Bossier and the city of Bossier City against the property located at lot 5, 5A, the Pierre Bossier subdivision, replat, Bossier City, Louisiana, more particularly described in the attached Exhibit A, Parcel P3, in connection with the East Texas Street Gravity Main Repairs Project. Final reading. So moved. Second. Uh, the floor is open for any comments. Council, please vote. Adopt an ordinance authorizing the institution of expropriation proceedings pursuant to a Local services agreement executed between the Parish of Bossier and the City of Bossier City against the property located at 2968 East Texas Street, Bossier City, Louisiana, more particularly described in the attached Exhibit A, Parcel P5 and 7, in connection with the East Texas Street Gravity Main Repairs Project. Final reading. So moved. Second. Open for any comments? Council, please cast your vote. Adopt an ordinance authorizing the institution of expropriation proceedings pursuant to a local services agreement executed between the Parish of Bossier and the City of Bossier City against the property located at Lot 1, less than described in Volume 1149-243, Lots 1A, 3, 10, and 4, less Pierre Bossier replat of Lot 4, the Pierre Bossier subdivision replat, Bossier City, Louisiana, more particularly described in the attached Exhibit A, Parcel P2 and 4, in connection with the East Texas Street Gravity Main Repairs Project. Final reading. So moved. Second. Comment from anyone? Please cast your vote, Council. Adopt an ordinance to appropriate funds to cover construction costs for the Green Acres Lift Station Improvement Project for a total of $3,800,000 to cover the 2014 Utility Bond Fund. Final reading. So moved. Second. Floor is open for comments. Please cast your vote. Adopt an ordinance to appropriate funds to cover construction costs for the Green Acres Sewer Force Main Project for a total co total of four million four hundred eighty thousand dollars to come from the twenty fourteen Utility Bond Fund. Final reading. So moved. Second. Comments. Please cast your vote, Council. Adopt an ordinance declaring the city's intention to acquire full ownership of certain adjudicated properties for the purposes of new home ownership opportunities as a donation to the Fuller Center, otherwise providing with respect there to final reading. So moved. Second. Second. Floor is open for comments. Council, please vote. New business. Public hearing to allow all interested persons to express their views with regard to the proposed issuance by the city of not exceeding $13 million of its taxable utilities revenue bonds 2017 series, the bonds in various series either as taxable or tax exempt obligations at a rate or rates not to exceed 4% per annum for a term of terms not exceeding 22 years from the date of issuance of each individual series. This hearing is being held in accordance with the previously published notice of intention to issue bonds. We open the floor for public input on this hearing. Anyone would like to give comments on this item? The public hearing is now closed. Need a motion? We don't need a motion on this, okay. 
item number two. Adopt an ordinance to declare that an emergency did exist in the city of Bossier City, which affected property, public health, and safety due to the requirement for the repairs to the ozone system at the water treatment plant at a cost of $20,000. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Board is open for comments. Council, please vote. Adopt a resolution authorizing the hiring of one replacement police department departmental records clerk due to retirement from the department first and final reading. So moved. Second. Any comments? Please vote. Adopt a resolution authorizing the hiring of two replacement police officers due to a termination and a retirement from the department first and final reading. So moved. Second. The floor is open for comments. Please vote. Adopt a resolution authorizing the hiring of one replacement police communications officer due to a resignation from the department. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Second. Any comments? Council, please vote. Adopt a resolution authorizing one permits and inspection clerk to be replaced due to a vacancy from termination. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Board is open for comments. Council, please vote. Adopt a resolution to replace two deputy marshals due to terminations and promote one deputy to the position of sergeant, all within the current budget of the marshal's office. First and final reading. Mr. President, I'd like to continue this to August, continue the resolution to August 1st, and then we'll, maybe, uh, we're going to rewrite the ordinance a little bit, and we may, be having a, we may have to call a special meeting to get this done in a timely manner, but. Uh, Is that a motion? Mr. That's Williams? a motion to continue to the okay. first, August 1st. Is there a second? Second. 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 Okay. Any uh, comments from the public? Council, please vote for the continuation. <clears throat> okay, so it's on the agenda for August 1st. Adopt a resolution to create the position of EMS officer within the budget of the Bossier City Fire Department. First and final reading. So moved. Second. I thought Mr. Uh, Cusson would, would come up. Is he here? Yeah, there he is. Now, Chief, I'm sorry. And give us that great creative uh, input that he always gives us <laughs> on items like this. <clears throat> this uh, position, we were looking to try to think outside the box a little bit. Uh, We've been running out of ambulances. Uh, we only have four ambulances for the whole city. As you heard, the population came up when people were shopping. Uh, so we looked at our times of the week, and it seemed to be Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursday, Friday, Saturday were really between eight and five, eight and six. We were uh, seemed to be running out of ambulance. Last I looked, don't quote me on the numbers, around the end of April, we had used mutual aid 80 something times already this year uh, so we did a little pilot program on our own we took the assistant chief of vms and myself or the deputy chief or the chief vms whomever we would throw two people together and we keep a reserve ambulance at the complex now and we ran a power shift eight to five monday through friday and we dramatically dropped our numbers of calling mutual aid um, the deal if we call mutual aid or we go mutual aid, we don't bill and they don't bill. It was just too confusing on the billing process. But with this position here, I kind of look at it like a power shift. Uh, have a guy that we can use for EMS training uh, to go out and do anything we need him to do as far as EMS training and new equipment and all that. Also have him with one of us to run a power shift between eight and five, Monday through Friday, and use them on a, if we get in the holiday season, adjust their hours or whatever, to where we can run that fifth ambulance. If we had to man up a fifth ambulance, you're looking at no less than nine employees. This is a way to do it for the cost of captain's pay, which I'm gonna quote me on this 25% over starting pay of a firefighter. We made one run. If he catches one run in a month, he triples that amount of money amount we receive and being able to bill for that one call 
also we wanted to look into doing we're seeing around the country like mckinney texas is kind of the leader in uh, community paramedicine so we're going to use this and start uh, using this guy to address you have people who we looked uh, so far this year we've made one run on a person 30 something times already same person well, we'll go out, he'll go out, we'll meet with these people, and we'll address if they're not taking their medicine correctly or any way we can help them lay their medicine out, how to lay it out, just kind of educate them and what to do to help take care of themselves. And we'll have a list of uh, Meals on Wheels, Council on Aging, all the different uh, agencies we can help put them in touch with to help them take care of themselves out in the community. So that's our idea. We're just trying to figure out a way to assist with the problem we have without coming to y'all and saying, hey, I need nine or 10 people. We need to add a fifth ambulance. We just thought we'd try something. And, and our two month trial period so far, knock on wood, has worked really well as far as manning up that ambulance. So we, as a matter of fact, we take delivery next week of a, a brand new ambulance that's a full frontline reserve. It'll never go front line. It'll be the one sitting down there, which will be our fifth one to jump into whenever we need it. And we just think we can do it by juicing it, thinking outside the box and doing it with one person instead of 10 people. So. Great. Sounds good. Very innovative. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate it. Uh, the floor is open for comments from anybody in the public. We have a motion, Mr. Free, and I think a second, Mr. Williams. Mm -hmm. Council, please vote. Adopt a resolution indicating the intention of the City of Bossier City, State of Louisiana to approve the two-year appointment of Lynn Austin as a director to the Board of Louisiana Local Government Environmental Facilities and Community Development Authority. The authority as provided by Chapter 10D of Title 33 of the Louisiana Revised Statutes of 1950 as amended. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Any comments? Council, please vote. Adopt a resolution authorizing the hiring of a tax auditor. So moved. Second. Comments from public? Please vote. Adopt a resolution to fill three vacancies in the Public Works Department. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Comments? Please vote. Approved parade permit fee waivers for the following airline high school homecoming parade September 28th, 2017 and the Melissa Maggio Remembrance Run September 9th, 2017. So moved. Second. The floor is open for comments. Please vote. Approved reappointment of Don Williams as a representative for the Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission. Appointment effective August 30th. 2017 and expires August 30th, 2021. And I skipped one, I know I did, but I'll go back to it. So reverse? Okay. So moved. All right. Second. Okay. Um, John Williams is the next one, but we're going to reverse it? Yes, sir. Okay. That's fine. Any comments? Uh, council, please vote. I got ahead of myself. Approved reappointment of Billy Montgomery as the joint representative of the Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission. Appointment effective August 30th, 2017 and expires August 30th, 2019. So moved. Second. Floor is open for comments. Council, please vote. Try that again. We got to vote again. Can we get that? Mr. Free, Mr. Darby, and Mr. Walker. Let's vote again. There we go. And that's the last item? Yes, sir. That's it. Okay. We will uh, have the agenda meeting on this, the 11th of July. That's a Tuesday. It won't be on a Thursday. And that's at 3 p.m. We do appreciate the service that everyone brings to the city. And thank you for being here. This meeting is adjourned.